I don't know, stuff your underwear with them. Hey there everybody, this is Camzilla51, and welcome to my new review space. Back there is a cool new display case that I got for Christmas and makes for a really great background. But anyways, today what we're looking at is something very, very special. So in the final few days of the club, I was really, really trying hard to try and finish that part seven of the BotCon video in order to try and get everything completed and to kind of commemorate the time that the club had given us. And some exciting things happened. First of all, mere days before the end of the club, before the end of everything, they put out a sticker sheet like a last little farewell, a last little thing that they gave. It was amazing. It had stickers for Blue Streak, it had faction symbols, it had stickers for Ramjet over there, it had stickers for all of the stuff coming up in the subscription service 5.0. It was like a last will and testament. Like, unto Blue Streak I hereby bequeath a full set of stickers. May you shine brightly, my son. And like, I thought it was so precious. <laughs> I, I bought two sets. One to apply, one to put under my pillow. One to apply, and one to share a glass of wine with. <laughs> All right, Loki, I kind of went crazy on the buying. I bought up everything I thought I could possibly want from the rest of the club. I got single issues one through six of the Collector's Club magazine and from seven through 30 of the compiled collections of the magazine. And I also got the, <laughs> I also got the Target gift card Optimus Prime that I've been looking for in person since 2007. Finally got that in my collection now. As well as honorary BotCon 2016 shot glasses. Because I gotta give a toast. So we're gonna conclude this video with that at the end of it, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty fun. So, anyways, I got to anyway, and I was super glad that I did. Little did I know things were still kind of unfolding behind the scenes. I was talking on the Repro Labels Facebook page, and there was some talk about are these good stickers, are these bad stickers? I was just celebrating the fact that they existed. And Jesse Wittenrich, the guy who designed the labels, came into the conversation that we were having and cleared up some some things that we were kind of having some guesswork on because there weren't any instructions. We didn't know where labels were supposed to go. So he came into the conversation and he was all like, hey guys, so they're vinyl stickers, they're supposed to stretch. He provided insights into the design of the set and he posted links to his Twitter where he had taken pictures of how the labels were supposed to go on in the first place. And then those were kind of like the guide. It was so cool, I screenshotted everything. And before you start getting ideas about me being some kind of petty bitch that screenshots everything, I'm not. I'm that sentimental bitch to screenshots everything. <laughs> Since he didn't actually get the stickers himself until like a week after the deadline of the club because of all of the shit that they had going on towards the end of the year and with snowstorms and a whole bunch of mess. So I sent him a message and I was like, hey man, thanks for coming into the conversation. And uh, I just wanted to say, I love the stickers. And uh, if you have some time, I want to ask you some questions. And he replied. <laughs> yeah, that sounded weird. So he and I started going back and forth and having this really awesome conversation slash unofficial interview, and it was so cool because I got to ask him all the questions. I mean, like, all the questions. So, without further ado, let me show you how awesome this sticker set is. So here we have the TFCC Subscription Service 4.0 Blue Streak, the secret seventh figure that came out of the subscription service. Now Jesse told me that uh, this figure was actually supposed to have stickers in the first place. So here's what this sticker set is supposed to do. First of all, you get these two door vinyl stickers that cover the white spots on the sides of his arms, and you get a whole bunch of other G1 Diaclone stuff. You get the blue streak that covers the feet, you get these details here that cover up the shins, you get tail lights, you get all these cool things that are supposed to go on his chest and arms, and then of course you get the spinister eyes, some G2 stuff, a couple of Rodimus stars for good measure, and a whole mess of faction symbols. Not to mention more eyes for the BotCon Mega 
Megatron. And everyone had been thinking that you had to get the Magnapox set in order to get the stickers for that Megatron. But uh, Jesse said that the reason why they put them back here was that even after two runs of having the uh, Magnapox stickers, there were still some fans who didn't have eyes for their Megatrons. So they wanted to triple make sure that everyone had enough eyes by even making more eyes than there were toys. So that's cool. And remember, I mean, this set is only like five to eight bucks. I don't remember the exact price, but it's cheap so there's that fantastic option to finally give your megatron eyes without having to go down 120 dollars for the sticker sheet and two exclusive figures so that's cool a couple of other things were mysteries to me at the time but we'll cover those when we get to them jesse told me he also colored this picture and this is one of four separate little cards that can be used really for your fancy, whatever you want to put them on. They're stickers that are also on the same vinyl material. And if you want to, this is the same dimension as a trading card. So you can use this, uh, well, you'd have to remove it from the backing and apply it to something. I don't know, maybe there's a, a perfect square cornered trading card that you can find. I only collect Pokemon, so I'm not familiar with any other card shapes. But it is the same dimensions you can fit it inside your card sheets along with your titan's return cards along with your combiner wars cards it'll fit there but if you want to keep it on the on the paper like i do then uh this won't fit into the card sleeve i'm just gonna have to put this maybe in the botcon box itself he said the story behind this was that they had planned to make the whole thing just sized enough so that you could slip it right into the sleeve without having to worry about it but for some reason when they got printed out it just something went wrong and it ended up being the wrong size so it was a mystery to them but uh, it's still really really cool artwork and uh, I think I think this was the most impressive of the four options there are only 375 copies of this card available but there are 375 times four of these available so these aren't quite as limited as I thought, which was just 375 of this of this sheet. No, it's it's of this card and then times four for all the four different cards. You get the idea. So what does this mean for your blue streak here? Well, it means that you can take something that looks like this and make it look something like this. And uh, right now I'll just say uh, special thanks to my buddy Josh for lending me his copy so I could compare the two in front of my camera. And you can already see a lot of the differences that are going on. Let's run down through it. So first among the changes, you'll notice that the red here was covered up by blue stickers to kind of make this look like one whole blue panel. And the reason behind that, Jesse said, is because he wanted to go for more of an authentic Diaclone look. Of course, he was involved in the deco process of both the original figure and the sticker set. So he wanted the option to be able to give you a choice whether you wanted to display this and have it kind of match with your Combiner Wars Prowl and Smokescreen, or if you wanted something that would match with Prowl and Smokescreen if you had G1 style repro labels applied to them, which is really, really awesome. He said that his personal preference would kind of be a mix between the two of these. So if you wanted to, you could keep the tampograph detail there and then uh, add the upgrade stuff that this one doesn't have. But this sticker set makes this completely go as far as possible to look like the Diaclone Blue Streak. And you can see that evidenced all over the toy. But let's keep going, because we have those covered up. We have this brand new Autobot symbol that is slightly pink and has a little outline around it. And when I talked to Jesse about that, I said, it's slightly pink. Does that mean that it's possibly for the Paradron Medic that's coming in the uh, subscription service 5.0? And he, he laughed and he said, uh, well, they're the same size but no but you could apply it if you wanted to but he was really going for an authentic diaclone look because he he's such a g1 stickler the original blue streak toy had slightly pink autobot symbols with a little outline around it and uh, repo labels didn't have an option for that none of the reissue g1 toys had an option for that so he wanted to be sure to recreate that also, you'll notice that there's a little white U that goes down here. Keep in mind that all of these stickers are vinyl, so they conform to the uh, the surfaces here. And I went over this with a heat gun, and it really sucked into all of these little holes that the sculpting had. You can see these little red spots that are supposed to be the uh, running lights. Are they running lights or fog lights? The little red lights that were on the G1 Blue Streak on the on the hood chest. Also, you have a Blue Streak Z, but the Z is backwards to kind of be an S for copyright reasons. You didn't want to get in trouble. And it's also like S for streak. So 
there's that. Also, you have uh, more G1 toy decos that go all down the crotch. You've got uh, these waist stickers up here. You've got the hip stickers up there. You even have these... <laughs> Hyper Hyper G1 shin stickers down here, and uh, of course the tail end of the vehicle that are really really super detailed and look very similar to the G1 stickers. Oh yeah, and I forgot these little arm inclusions there. As a personal preference, I like to add the uh, Combiner Wars hand foot gun thing to try and go even harder towards the look there of having the G1 missiles up on the back. Also kind of seen in this mode is the bicep stuff. Obviously you can see that this blue covers that door sticker really well, and I want to get to more about that in the vehicle mode. Because that's a really tricky process, but Jesse helped walk me through it. Now before we get to vehicle mode, I want to show you comparisons and context for all the other Combiner Wars toys that you might display this with. First of all, here's Prowl and Combiner Wars Smokescreen, who was also generously lent by my buddy Josh. Thanks, mate. So here you can kind of get an overall look of what they look like in context. Now if I were to remove the sticker set, this is what he intended to be just kind of a trio of them in their retail colors, if you will. Just a kind of a simplified and slightly updated look if you wanted to keep them all in their stock conditions. But this doesn't really do much for me. Number one, because I don't have smokescreen, because there's just something about him that's too blue and there's not enough detail there for me. I mean, the vehicle mode is another thing, but <laughs> that's a side topic. But if I really wanted this trio of Autobots, I would have wanted a, a silver blue streak. Something that looks like the cartoon, because the cartoon is usually what I collect to, although I have been developing quite the G1 Sweet Tooth recently. So this particular look didn't necessarily do it for me. Instead, I decided to go for the Hyper Diaclone look. Now this is intended for if you had the Repro Labels G1 styled stickers for both Prowl and Smokescreen. And then they would really all look like they all belong together as part of a complete set. As for me, I'm going to have Prowl as either part of my IDW shelf or combined with Optimus Maximus. And like I said, Smokescreen doesn't really have a place in my collection. So Blue Streak here is just kind of going to be on his own which I'm okay with. I would put him with a shelf of just Collector's Club toys if I had one. He's probably gonna go on my Titan's Return shelf, maybe. So that's what it looks like in context. And because I have a love for this kind of thing, ever since I did the BotCon videos, here is the source mold versus the reference. Now, of course, I don't have an original Diaclone blue streak here to compare to, but a lot of Prowl's labels are kind of borrowed over from the Diaclone's sticker layout, which includes the shin details, a lot of the waist region details, the red lights here, the feet tail light stickers, just the majority of this design is borrowed from here anyway, so that's about as close as I can get it. And hopefully you can see a lot of the similarities here. This is why the white is here, this is why this is here. There's honestly no point in me just going step by step about it because everything that you see is directly borrowed over from that Diaclone blue streak. Also, on a fun side note, you remember those BotCon PowerPoint presentations where the Collector's Club would come in front of you and they'd have these mock-up slides where they'd have the source mold and the uh, source material for what whatever character they were going for and then a thing in the middle that would be like the mock-up of whatever that was. Turns out, Jesse was the guy who did that ever since Dion. He was the guy who would do these mock-ups in those PowerPoint presentations. So, in a way, I guess you could kind of say this is slightly homaging him. So, hey-o. Now, there's something else I want to point out before I move on. These shoulder stickers that you see here, I misplaced them my first go around. And he said that they're actually supposed to go right up in there. There are these horizontal divots, these horizontal ridges here that come up and I was afraid to mess around with those, so I avoided them. He said not to. And this top one in the corner there, he said that's supposed to go all the way over there. And uh, he, he said that uh, one of his ideas was to try and get this little white rectangle to land right on top of the horizontal ridge there, but it didn't really work out and he acknowledged it. Make note that to put these here, you might require the help of a hairdryer. He also suggested as one of his personal uh, sticker using tools, a stylus with kind of a gentle rubber nib. He said that's really nice and gentle for getting things into the cracks and grooves wherever you need the sticker to go without scratching the surface. He said these are durable and flexible since they're made out of vinyl and uh, that they wouldn't get too damaged by stretching them a little bit, but he said just be careful not to scratch that ink. Same thing goes for the blue 
stuff here up on the torso and you might be able to see that uh, I did slightly scratch one of those blue vinyl labels but it really goes a long way especially once you hit it with that heat gun to try and make it look like it was originally part of the blue plastic and same thing with the waist it really looks nice and here we have the before and after in vehicle mode and the first thing that is definitely going to jump out at you is the blue stripe there that covers up the white and honestly this is what so many people begged for the completion of the blue side doors and of course you have the sorely needed tail lights back there and uh, one last thing is the, like I mentioned before, the pink Autobot symbol right there with the outline. A lot of people, myself included, had problems with these side door stickers. And before I got the chance to talk to Jesse, I had misapplied them. And he said that uh, the vinyl should be able to stretch and, and obey you if you just kind of force it to go where you need it to. So here's what he told me to do. He said, start up here at the top and then stretch a little bit until you see the uh, the bend here. Here, I'll show you this. Uh, until you see the first bend right there. And then uh, keep going, keep pulling, and just try and get everything to land where it needs to go. You, you have to be careful because right here and right here are pieces of plastic that will come in and rub up in that area. So you have to be sure that the width of the sticker as you go along is the exact measurement or even thinner slightly than the width of the white piece right there or else when this bicep swivels or when this elbow curls you're going to damage those stickers but it is possible because i saw it on his and i was able to do it here on mine this of course is my second application of these so don't be worried if you get it wrong you can go over it again but not too much because you might lose some adhesive. Luckily, Repro Labels has a little bit of a sticker fixer to try and help out with that. So if you do have a problem, it's supposed to work on almost any sticker. So give that a try. But it comes down to around here, and uh, I haven't had any lifting problems. This is after I've hit both of these with a hair dryer and tried as hard as I could to mush everything into the cracks where they're supposed to go. Yeah, they're looking super crisp. They're looking like they match super well. This is where most of the value is going to be in this set for most people. And here's that same comparison of all of the Datsun brothers in their vehicle modes. Now, uh, this is the before and this is the after. So here's what they look like uh, as a trio. And I guess you might be able to consider that perhaps this little side discrepancy on all three doors might be a consistency thing that you could see yourself potentially getting over. But as standalone figures, I don't feel that they really accomplished that enough. If it mattered enough to me, I would have gotten the Repro Label set for this just to cover that and maybe do some G1 details, but this Prowl is more of a modern IDW Prowl, who's kind of the rogue hard-ass who everyone hates, rather than the G1 Prowl, which I have represented as my Universe Classics Prowl. So I didn't really care all that much about it. And like I said, this vehicle mode is really, really pretty, but all the paint budget went to this, and then the robot mode is just so blue. So um, this trio is not for me. But here's what they look like with the updated sticker sheet. Now I think this is uh, this is definitely the move you want to do if you want a good standalone looking figure and if you want both of these to have repro labels and then all three of those are going to look great by themselves and together and one last comparison with the g1 toy now at first i did have an inkling to try and put the uh blue streak z sticker right there where the police sticker is right there on prowl and where the fair lady z steer had gone on the diaclone toy but even though I put it there, it was kind of small for the space, and Jesse informed me that it was also supposed to be for the combiner peg stomach. So those all look really, really pretty. Overall, I think this set is pretty freaking amazing, but it doesn't end there! Also included on this sticker sheet are G2 labels for Optimus Prime and Megatron, ARM stickers for all of the releases of the Armada Starscream mold, plenty of Wreckers Faction symbols for all of your subscription service 5.0 Wreckers that are coming, Shattered Glass Decepticons, Shattered Glass Autobots, Maximals, Predacons, just anything you might need, Spinister Eyes in both Black and Aqua, and of course those beautiful eyes for Dragon Megatron. 
G2, Autobot, and Decepticon stickers there, and even Rodimus stars. Now if you remember, during the concept process of the subscription service 4.0, the fans voted on whether or not they wanted black or aqua eyes, and what eventually won out was the, uh, was the aqua eyes, but I always thought the black was pretty cool because it was kind of like a superhero, kind of like a ninja thing, and it really made the eyes more defined, it made them pop more. I think it's really cool that they gave the option and especially since this was like their last breath, last ditch thing, being like, Here, just take Paul. It's just, ugh, a smorgasbord of extra details. And now it's time for a TFCC extra fact bonus round. Everything else that I learned in that conversation. Apparently, Jesse had also made the Magnaboss stickers. Part of the inclusion of the Megatron eyes in there was that it was a problem from the factory where they had gotten the toys back and there were no eyes and they were like in a panic trying to figure out what to do and one of their ideas was to have somebody painting them on at the convention but that would have been a disaster if nobody had gotten all of their eyes painted or if being human someone had <laughs> made a mistake. So there was the scramble to try and add them to uh, the existing Magnaboss set. They had already decided that they were going to try and do those stickers. So adding those to the set as kind of a free toss in here you go was part of their solution for that. Their price for Megatron had already been factored in and set before they realized that they were missing eyes and they would have needed to do stickers in order to replace the missing eyes. So rather than charging you extra for stickers on the side, they decided not to do that after the whole 2012 fiasco with Soundwave and his headband and having an extra accessory they needed to purchase in order to complete the set, they, they didn't want to go through that fiasco again. So they just decided to put them free with the Magnabot stickers. But it's also cool that they were able to put those into this set so that you wouldn't have to pay the $120 plus the two extra figures plus go down and hunt your own Silverbolt and Prowl and uh, Ironhide just to make your own Magnabot just to get that sticker sheet to be able to apply the eyes to your Megatron. It's cool that they're now here on this much less expensive sheet because now you can apply that for a fraction of the cost. And you get blue streak labels and future labels for like everything that's coming out in the new subscription service as the club fades out. Also, if you're a big Repro Labels aficionado like I have just asked my wallet. Apparently Jesse made these all by himself. Now the way that Repro Labels works is they have one person do the cut lines. They have one person go in and make the artwork for it. The way that they do it is they, they measure it out. But the way that Jesse did it is he was just the one person team. So he had to take a picture, a dead on picture of each surface and then get that picture to scale properly and he measured the proper dimensions. And then he designed the sticker on top of that. Now this might explain why some of these stickers aren't perfectly fitting for some people or why he tried to go up in here and tried to make those uh, shoulder labels work and they they kind of did kind of didn't. Perhaps if there had been a second pass or if there had always been uh, the funding to be able to make the set that might have happened but as it was he said the reason why this had gotten pushed to like the last minute Literally within days of the end of the club, he said that there were so many things going on towards the closing of the club and the sticker set had always been planned but it just kept on getting pushed to the back burner and the back burner and if one thing wasn't going to make it, they figured that the sticker set would probably be it. But they, they did manage to get it out the door in time. On kind of a fun side note, Jesse said that the reason why he wanted to do all of these stickers underneath the hood and uh, down here on the ab plate was that he really didn't care for the whole kind of fibble, as he called it, the fake kibble, the fake car chest that this toy had. And so this was kind of his way to try and add those extra details that the G1 toy had. Other things that you might have seen Jesse do, he started doing some illustrations for the club in 2005, then a photo comic strip in 2006. And he says that evolved into doing letters for the main club and con comics in 2008. He did his first color work for the comics in 2010 and started writing the comics in 2011. And he says he thinks his first pro story was that same year. He also did toy concepts starting with the TCC membership figure Dion and all the way up through this past year. That's basically all the proof of concept mock-ups and the proposal images to have 
Hasbro. He also did the builds for all the TF G.I. Joe crossovers and all the accessory callouts, except for Ninja Force Scarlet, because he wasn't familiar enough with the Ninja figures to come up with all the parts numbers required for them. And the final decos for Only Human Rodimus Prime and RC. And this is one of my favorite parts. He also did the head designs, the initial turnaround sketches for 2013 Hoist and Electro, 2015 G2 Hound, and 2016's Predicus the Combiner Head, Pterosaur's Head, Tarantulus's Head, the Ramjet Head, Impactor, and Bludgeon. I mean, these are huge. Not to mention the Tampograph designs for the Creons, other than 2014. So, an understandable perspective to take on these stickers is to say that no way he's a Collector's Club exclusive figure, there's no way I'm going to put stickers on it. Well, you'd be forgiven for thinking so. But the thing is, these stickers were made by the club in order to complete this figure. Personally, I believe that the whole cohesive package is really the way to go with this. Not only does it complete the look there on the, on the shoulders slash doors, you also get what was completely in the original designer's head when he made this. And I think that as long as you apply the full set as it was intended, then your figure will not lose value but gain value. Because this sticker set was the last thing that the club put out. The last thing they made, ever. Do you realize how much that... <laughs> Do you realize how valuable this little piece of paper is going to become? Do you realize how much value is added to this now? Not taken away. Because these are official. Think of it this way. If you had a G1 toy, would you want it complete with all of its stickers properly applied? Or would you rather have some of the stickers, or would you rather have none of the stickers? Even though none of the stickers on a G1 toy is sometimes a look that some people want to go for, as a stickers unapplied, ooh, it's so minty fresh kind of thing, the original intent of the toy's design is to be completely decked out, head to toe, in all of its prescribed stickers. So, for me personally, I have a tremendous value on that, on what the designer originally intended, which is why I can only see this thing with more value than I had before. With that in mind, I'd say that Blue Streak is the only one who had that apply to him. Because with all of the other labels, with these faction symbols here, they were just added there to give you an option, to give you something that you wanted to go for. JC knew that there are a lot of people who love their 3H Comics records, so he wanted to be able to make sure that all of these were included for when people want to make wreckage. He wanted to give the option to turn G2 Optimus into a completely G2 Optimus with his inner robot and his pretender shell, and the same thing with Megatron. And the reason behind that is that the pretender shell has one faction symbol, the inner robot has the other faction symbol. So if you don't want those to, uh, mix and match, then you've got that option. You can either make it completely G2 or completely G1, whichever way you want to go about it. That was the part of the video where I usually get pretty sentimental about the club. Oh. Because I did tremendously love it. <laughs> I think I'm crying. I kind of viewed this set as a last will and testament, just bequeathing their last final wishes upon all of their figures left to come. It was kind of sad and it was kind of sweet, just like Piano Man. But as it turns out, the club store is still open right now. As it is, he said that Hasbro wanted to give them the allowance to be able to still sell things after the deadline of the club so that they wouldn't be stuck with a whole bunch of inventory. So they're still selling. They just aren't able to make anything new after the uh, December 31st deadline. <laughs> Ouch. Bad pun. Bad touch. So you can still grab your hands on this, and I would highly, highly recommend it. If you want to complete your blue streak, if you want to complete all of your Armada Seekers, whether they're the Club Seekers or whether they're Takara or Hasbro, all of them are covered here. If you want to upgrade the eyes of your Spinister, or if you want to own the last piece of history from the Transformers Collectors Club, I... Listen... I got two for a very, very good reason. I'm thinking that these are going to bounce up in price because, of course, as we know through history, once an artist dies, all of their artwork skyrockets in price. Grab yourself one. Or two. Or three. Or, I don't know, stuff your underwear with them. Okay, dude, <laughs> don't do that because that would actually be really gross.
As it is, the last remnants and will and testament of the club are going to be releasing within the next few months. They're going to be hitting everyone's mailboxes, and it's going to kind of feel like your grandfather just died and all of their stuff in their will is now being dispersed out. I tried to ask Jesse when their store was going to close, but he couldn't exactly give me an answer because his department doesn't directly deal with the store department, and he maybe heard it like third hand from somebody. It's unsure when the store is going to close, so be sure to grab yourself at least one. At least one. And while you're at it, pick up anything else that you might want to grab and save. For me, that was all of the history of the Collector's Club magazines, and some some extra little fun things along the way. So, I hope if you're, if you're over 21, you'll join me in a little toast. Oh, God, I love that sound. Wait, 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 let's do it again. If you're over 21, I hope you'll join me in a toast to the end of the club. Thank you to 12 years of service. Thank you to Jesse Wittenrich. Thank you to everyone who's worked so hard over these last 12 years. This is for you guys. Damn, that's good scotch. <laughs> Tell you what, why don't we as Transformers fans make a new tradition? Every time we make a kind of drinking game, whether it's robot related or just whether we're hanging out with friends, I like to do this one thing. My dad told me about Chesty Puller and how he was just like this uber marine. And while I'm not too big into uh, army stuff, I think that it's cool to dedicate one to the people who really pulled through for you. So I think as Transformers fans, Maybe we should add one more shot onto the end of our drinking tables. Just say one for the club and down a hatch. Can we start this tradition? Can we do this? Fuck it, I'm doing it. <laughs> the most interesting reviewer in the world. <laughs> the most pompous gas bag in the world. Stay broke, my friends. <laughs> At this point, I don't know if it's the uh, sentiment or the whiskey, but feeling kind of warm inside. So if you've got one, raise a final glass with me and toast to the club. Oh my god, that's so good. All right, everybody, take care to the club. Thanks. Immensely, immensely thanks. This has been Camzilla51, and I'll talk to you next time. Hey there, everybody, this is Camzilla51, and I'm back in my room posted links to his Twitter, where he had... Fuck. Definitely pick... Uh, blah, 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 blah. And that petty bitch that screen... Blah, blah, blah.